Hi guys, Phil here, welcome back to some Racing Bible for another video. It's been a while but we're back and today we're looking at the brand new Motorland Aragon circuit which has just been released for Race Room Racing Experience. Um, WTCR are going there this year and next year as part of an updated calendar, um, so we thought we'd take out a quick look at the track with the TCR cars and see how they drive um, and check out and give our, our thoughts on the circuit as well. So let's jump into the game and see how we get on. Okay, so here we are at Motorland Aragon uh, circuits. Uh, we're in the TCR class. We have a list of high quality touring car drivers and me on the list, um, so this could be fun. So let's jump onto the circuit now and give a, a good look around and see how this, this circuit drives in the TCR car. Now, my weapon of choice for this particular exercise is the Hyundai i30 TCR car, so let's fire it up and we'll go out on track and explore our surroundings. So let's. Uh, Get out of pit lane here. All right. So exiting just on the outside or inside of turn one. So I'm not going to go too fast on this outlap here, just to kind of get a, a look around. And the first thing I can see on on track is it looks very nice. It's very natural, nice and detailed. The road surface looks good. Plenty of. Uh, tyre marks all over the road there. Now, being in Spain, it's uh, quite dry ground by the looks of things. So there's lots of dust, but also seems to be a fair amount of um, tarmac runoff area as well. Now this is a, a Herman Tilke designed circuit. Well, I know there's going to be a few groans from people thinking, oh no, not one of those. Um, he hasn't got the most uh, amazing reputation amongst fans for designing good racetracks, but hopefully this one is uh, one that bucks that trend. So let's just let this alpha get out of the way in front of us here, so we can get a good look around. It's a good mixture of, there's been a old wall on the left there, a good mixture of um, slow and high speed corners. But so far the flow seems to be pretty good. It's not stop-start, it's not um, unnatural to drive. Look at the size of this straight here, this goes on for miles. <laughs> but the details around the circuit look good, there's lots of life to it, there's things going on the inside, there's lots of details on the outside of the circuit as well, which is good, adds to the immersion. I think there's a really tight hairpin here, which the Alpha and I have just about missed. <laughs> There's a good old view looking back up to the circuit there. Cranston on the right, back over the, uh, the line here. So let's go on a, a lap of the circuit and let this alpha get out of the way. Okay, so coming down to turn one, then over the start finish straight. So left hander, down a couple of gears to third. And run over to the outside there. And a fast, flat out right hander here. And this one also. I believe is flat out, just about. As we're coming into here, this is a double left-hander here, you kind of break on this first curve, down a couple of gears, so it's smashing to the back of another car, and then back on the power again. And again, the flat out around this little right-handed kink here. And you're kind of breaking and turning a little bit for this right-hander here, which leads on to, I guess, the middle straight of the circuit, I suppose you could call it. It's, um, so here, it's probably the, one of the slowest parts of the circuit is this little S-bend right and then left. The left-hander drops away on the exit, so it's quite easy to uh, have the car's wheel spin out of there, especially in front-wheel drive like this. Let's go past this alpha so we can see where we're going. Are we still there? No, he's gone. Yeah, he's gone. Okay, so flat out left, and there's a slightly unsighted left-hander here. It comes up on you quite quickly. Again, no lifting through the right-hander here. On the brakes reasonably early into here. This corner again comes up, it's off camber. Now this one is a super important corner which leads onto this massive straight. So you've got to get that one right to get a good lap time around here. Because if you lose half a mile an hour or a mile an hour at that corner, that translates into much bigger numbers at the end of the straight. So you've got to maximize your run through there as best you can. And that'll help your lap time increase or improve, shall I say. 
Now, big old stop into here. I'm going to get on the brakes nice and early so I don't run on like I did last time. That's probably about right. And again, keep the, the throttle pedal welded to the floor. And we're back up and over the line. So I think the, the circuit drives really well. It's got a good layout to it, nice flowy. Seems to be a good few opportunities for overtaking as well, especially in touring cars. That hairpin would be absolute chaos, I can imagine. Gabrielli in front of us here, let's um, try and clear him if we can. Breaking through there. Didn't take that flood out, I haven't got the AI set high enough, I don't think. Definitely not high enough. Come on, let's go, Gabrielli. I'm going into there, is it? Bit of a lock up. Go around the outside of him. No, it's going to force me off. <laughs> right, let's see if we can get into there. There we go. I was feeding that power in nice and gently in the front wheel drive cars because it's so easy to spin the front tyres. What am I braking for? Don't brake! Gordon! <laughs> Aggressive. To be fair, I know the AI are having their moment being a little bit slow through some of the corners. <laughs> Didn't move in a nudge, it is touring cars after all. Um, although they are a little bit slow through the corners, I can't see improve that by upping the AI strength, but they're pretty good in fact that you can actually see them defending their positions, which is good, even though it's in practice mode and it's a little bit over aggressive, but the idea is good. TCR boys are going to have a, a fair amount of fun around here. It's going to be inside of Gordon, inside of the hairpin. He's better on the brakes than I am. Just about blocked past him. <laughs> Get out of it. Got him. <laughs> now, because of all of the uh, tarmac runoff space on this track, they're quite hot on track limits, so it's very easy to drop wheels off just a little bit too far and incur the wrath of the stewards, like I did there. <laughs> so that's the, the extent of the track warnings that you need to be looking out for. You really can't be uh, in there. You really can't be uh, putting too many wheels over the curbs, otherwise you will just lose all your lap times. That corner is so tricky because you're braking on a on a corner as well. So the back end tries to swap ends on you. So you've got to be super gentle with the inputs through there. And make sure you don't miss your braking point for the next corner like that. It's okay, this lap's been disallowed anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> Come on, on the curb on the inside. Is this actually flat? Yeah, easy. As long as you get the line right, if you don't turn in at the right point, it can wash you out off to the track as well, so important to get your turning point just right. Get too late on the brakes into there. Sausage curb on the inside to uh, prevent you from cutting too much there. Not to mention the fact you'll get a track limits penalty anyway. <laughs> but I like the circuit, I think it drives really nicely. There's lots of different uh, variations available as well within the game, so it's not just the Grand Prix circuit which we're on here. I'm just get stopped. Um, but yeah, I think there's five different layouts. So we'll probably have a quick look at those as well before we, we sign off our, our thoughts on the, the track. Um, but I think the track is a really good high quality track that you get from the guys at Sector 3 Studios. They've done a good job with it. Um, we know how good the TCR cars are I and mean, they're very popular to drive within the race room. They have good front wheel drive physics as you would expect them to. And, uh, 
always lots of really good competitions going on and good racing to be had. So a bit of understeer through there to kind of get out of the throttle. It's better controlling the back end through there. Be so precise and careful with your inputs in these things. Probably third gear all the way through there rather than going down to second, I'd say. that being a bit of a, a nightmare for tyre management for these cars. <laughs> Probably almost as much of a nightmare of tyre management but I am driving this thing at the moment. Not being very kind on the tyres at all. Too much curve there. <laughs> and back out onto the straight we go. Some massive slipstream battles to be had down here I think. It's quite wide as well, so you probably get three or four touring cars wide along here. Be good fun. To the big breaking point once more. Okay, stop this time. There we go, so that's a few laps of Motorland Aragon. Have you given it a go? Maybe if you have, let us know your thoughts on it in the, in the comments. Have you even tried Race Room? Uh, I think it's personally a very, very good simulator. It's very underrated and I think it's um, really good to drive. Force feedback is great. The sounds are exceptional. Uh, they've been doing a lot of work on the physics as well, so the cars I've had a lot of updates recently, um, but personally I think it's fantastic and it's, it's a free to play game, so the base content that's included, you get a few different cars and tracks to try and obviously you can purchase different cars and tracks as upgrades as well, um, but with the quality that you get with it, it's well worth doing and well worth trying out if you haven't already. But I love Race Room, I think it's it's really, really good. It's a good opportunity within the game, as I run off track again. Um, a good opportunity uh, to do lots of different esports competitions which they, they hold, uh, whether it be racing or hot lapping, whatever you feel happy doing, you'll find something to do in Race Room. There's monthly free competitions to do as well, so it's really, really good if you uh, have a competitive itch that you need to scratch. But go check it out. And if you try Aragon, let us know your thoughts on the circuit. I think it's good. Um, let's have a look at some of these other circuit layouts as well before we go. Okay, so here are the five circuit layouts available. So we've, we've tried the Grand Prix circuit, which is the one in the middle there. Um, there's the, the motorcycle Grand Prix circuit, which basically um, cuts off that really tight hairpin at the end and has a, a very fast, long uphill left-hander. And there's a, a fast circuit as well, which sounds quite intriguing. The uh, majority of it looks the same, but instead of having that kind of infieldy section after that long uphill left, you kind of go flat out around the, the left and straight down the straight. And then you have the motorcycle ending to the circuit as well. And there's a couple of shorter national circuits as well. So let's try that fast circuit first, and then we'll jump onto the, uh, the national circuit and see how that drives too. Okay, so here we go, starting our lap on the fast circuit, so the majority of this will be the same, this first section here will be pretty much the same. This time I swap car, I'm in the Lincoln Co, which is uh, a much longer car than the, the Hyundai. And if I'm being honest, it feels a lot more stable. I mean, I'm only running baseline setups, I haven't done the special setups on the cars, so may just be to do with that, but it certainly feels a lot more stable through the, uh, the highly unloaded corners like that last one we just came through. So this is all the same through here as we saw on the Grand Prix circuit, so that's fine. Down towards the, the 
right left chicane section. Now this is where it's going to change. So we have our fast uphill left. I'm going to keep it pinned through here. Now, instead of having our unsighted left here, we're just going to keep it flat out. <laughs> and that leads straight onto this big back straight. My goodness, this is going to be so quick down there. What are we running? 245, nearly 250 kilometers an hour. And flat out in sixth gear. Here we go. 255. On the brakes down a couple of gears and then we're going to chuck it in this left-handed uphill sweeper. <laughs> That's a great end to the lap. That's so fun. Not great for overtaking. It's so good to drive. Come on, Nicky. Let's go. Breaks through that. And the outside. Yeah, why not? Well, this version is great fun. If anything, the, um, the section that we cut out on this layout wasn't my favourite part of the circuit, if I'm being honest. I mean, it's all flows quite well but this bit is just insane. Just keep it nailed all the way from the exit of that downhill left providing you keep it within the track limits. Is don't lift off. <laughs> I mean this is running a TCR car or if we're running GT3 around here or um, a really high powered Formula car. The speed has been ridiculous down here. And then just chuck it in. <laughs> and let's see on the throttle. Pick up that curve on the inside there and let it run wide. That's so good. Right, let's try that national circuit. Okay, so here we are on the national circuit. This is the motorcycle layout which I've chosen for this one because it has the really cool final corner. So, this is where we get into our first corner. This is, as usual, nothing's changed here. I'm in the VW Golf this time around. So the track bends to the right and then instantly we're over to the left for a, a tight 90 left. And then followed by another 90 left, which kind of drops off the top of the hill here. Right, and another 90 left. Let's negotiate this other car. So rather than going down the straight, there's a another tight left-right chicane complex to get through. And then we're on our way. Um, so the other national circuit goes down to the tight hairpin at the bottom. But this being the motorcycle version, has this quicker final corner to negotiate. Balancing the car on the throttle, trying to figure out how much you should apply. Shape this Lincoln coat. It's a van. Oops. <laughs> He's sticking there on the outside. I'll be inside for the next one here if he doesn't cross on the app. <laughs> well, that was rude. So, as I was saying before, Ivan Muller decided to. Uh, push us off a little bit there. <laughs> the, the circuit itself is um, very tight and technical. Of course there's still plenty of corner cuts to be aware of. Um, probably for some smaller lower powered cars it could be quite a good combo but it's not my favourite track layout I must be honest but it's there for a purpose. It's um, if anything, it's a good learning tool for how to deal with low-speed corners in front-wheel drive cars like this. But this last corner is just so good. It's uh, 
all the tracks are really nicely put together. Big fan of them. Well done to the guys at Sector 3 Studios. Um, but if you like this video, give it a thumbs up below. We really appreciate your uh, your inputs. And if you've driven the Aragon circuit, let us know as well in the comments what you think of it. Are you a fan? Or are you a, a reserved critic, maybe? Or maybe a not-so-reserved critic? But let us know in the comments your thoughts. We'd love to hear from you. And if you really, really like the video, consider subscribing to the channel. It's free to do. And hit the bell icon if you want to be notified of any new videos which come out from us. There'll be plenty more sim racing reviews and challenges going on in the future, no doubt. Don't cut me off. <laughs> but yeah, if you really enjoyed it, we hope you uh, like our review of the Aragon circuit. But until next time, we'll see you soon.